<laughs> Sorry, for some reason Zoom didn't want me to, to stream to Facebook, so I hope that it's working on Facebook. Um, I'm just doing the normal Facebook Live, and that has sometimes been a bit weird with um, audio. So let me know if something is not working, and we'll get into the topic for today. All right, so we're chatting about relationships and just how that affects our health. And in some sense, even just to separate it like that is a bit strange. It's just one part of our health. Um, and I think it's definitely something that we don't necessarily immediately think about when we think about our health, right? We don't say, like, I'm prioritizing my health. I'm bonding with my partner. We're going for a date night, you know, or I'm prioritizing my health, so we're going to you know, buy some like couples course or whatever it is, like some sort of um, idea about relationships being just part of prioritizing our health and recovery. So I think that's one aspect of it. Just, I think we generally get that it's a part of our health, but maybe just kind of separate it a little bit. Um, and also I, I generally feel like when people put resources and time and energy towards um investing in their health it's usually in relation to physical health mostly sometimes mental health um, but generally it tends to be more um, with regards to physical health so i'd like to know from you guys i'm just going to give you three questions that you can answer um, if you don't feel comfortable commenting on the live you're welcome to send this to me um, but it's just going to be a rating scale so it doesn't have to be any like personal details you don't have to give me any more information um, but it's just to get a sense of um, general relational health. So this is part of the deep health questionnaire that I often use with my clients. And this is the section where we're rating our relational health. So the first one is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how supported do you feel by the people around you? So 1 to 10, how supported do you feel right now by the people around you? Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, so <laughs> um, that's why I sound like this. Um, the second question is, can you be your authentic self with the people that you spend your, the most time with? And often for clinicians, the people we spend the most time with are actually our patients. <laughs> um, so that's an interesting one, right? And I've definitely noticed with the clinicians I coach that the the feeling of being able to be authentic is, is vastly different when you're talking about patients and when you're talking about their personal life. And to a certain extent, that makes sense, right? Our closest relationships are the one that we often feel the most authentic um, with. But I don't feel like there has to be such a big gap between these two. Right? Like I feel like a lot of us could be more authentic and real with our patients. Um, and then we can explore what exactly that means, right? But it's just something that I've noticed with that um, rating. And then the third one is, do the people around you encourage healthy behaviors? So this is almost more like, do they support your health as well um, versus being a part of your health, which the other ones are more direct for that. Awesome. So I'm just going to read those three again. One, how supported do you feel by the people around you? Two, can you be your authentic self with the people you spend the most time with? And three, do the people around you encourage healthy behaviors? Okay, cool. So we'll get into just some of the topics on this. I mean, it's, it is a huge topic. <laughs> um, and for me, especially, it has been one of probably the biggest um, areas it has been the biggest stressor um in um i would say multiple like you know a decade ago a little bit less um but even since then right like relationships are a big stressor for me have been a big stressor for me in many ways and then on the flip side it also has been one of the biggest sources of health and one of the areas that i have probably invested a lot more time in in the last few years than I previously ever kind of thought was important. Um, and as an introvert, I always thought, you know, I don't need other people. <laughs> but it's better if I don't have other people. 
Um, but that's simply not true. Like introverts don't not like people. It's just that we um, get quite overstimulated by a lot of people in our lives. We generally like one-on-one -on -one friendships and relationships. And so those really close, that small close group is really important for an introvert because that is where they get their nourishing relationships from. So we do need those, right? And sometimes we do need, you know, more distant relationships as well. They're just less important um, to introverts to have like a, a bigger group. Um, okay, so yeah, maybe I think this is um, an illustration of, of how relationships can play a big part. They can be both one of our biggest stresses and the biggest like load on our plates, but they can also be a source of nourishment. They can also be one of the biggest reasons that we want to be doing things out, like why behind a lot of our um, things that we do. Um, and they can be a big part of our support structure as well. So when we are stressed out and overwhelmed, um, our partners can often help to help us with emotional regulation, they can help to calm us down, they can help to um, take things off our plates as well. Um, I think the clinicians that I coach, um, a few of them have the most amazing partners who like help out with um, everything that they need essentially and just make their lives so much easier and um, it's just so amazing. But I also have clinicians that I coach that this is absolutely not the case. Um, and then it really, like, you can see the difference in how much that is an extra load on, on your plate. And I think especially if your partner feels like just another person that you're taking care of, after taking care of patients, after taking care of maybe you have children at home as well, maybe you have aging parents, right? If your partner is just one of the other people that you having to like look after, that can be a huge stressor. Or if they're just not really... Um, willing to help you take things off your plate, right? Especially if you're feeling burnt out, overwhelmed, right? And your partner is not um, trying to help you take some of that load off your plate. It can be a really big um, yeah, source of stress for us. Okay, so um, I think for me, like one of the biggest, um, let me just backtrack a second. I think when we are in relationship with people, it can feel really hard and it can feel like um, like something bad or something like oh, this is just too much stress or too much work or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. But I like to think about it in a healthy way, right? So not not necessarily someone who's, well, obviously not someone who's like abuse, in an abusive relationship or something that's genuinely unhealthy, but just two people trying to navigate life together, right? You can think about all the things that you come up against, all the stresses that you navigate, the things that are hard. These are all things that are essentially like, it's just bringing up all your stuff. <laughs> and you bring up, your partner brings up all the stuff in you and you bring up all the stuff in your partner. And if we can view it from a place of, this is clearly something that I need to work with, right? Something that I need to deal with. Um, and not from a place of, oh, I must take all the blame, but just from a general perspective of like, being in a relationship with someone else is going to bring up stuff that I struggle with, that I find hard, um, that I need to work on, right? Um, I think the same can be true when we have a practice or when we are seeing patients, right? It's the same kind of thing. So let me give you an example of that. If you are struggling to set a boundary with your partner at home, right? Like, let's say they um, don't pull their weights around when it, uh, pull, their weights around? Mm. <laughs> pull their weights when it comes to like cleaning, right? So you're doing all the cleaning, or let's say you're doing everything, cleaning, cooking, um, taking care of your kids, whatever it is, right? If you struggle <laughs> to set boundaries with your partner around these things, to have the difficult conversation, to sit down and say, I'm not accepting this anymore, um, to have a difficult conversation of like, this is how I feel, how can we do something different? Like, I need something different to be happening here, right? Difficult conversations, boundaries. If you're struggling to have those things with your partner, if you're struggling to do those things, you are having those issues elsewhere, <laughs> right? With patients, with your family, with your close friends, right? So it can bring up just things that we already struggle with. So for me, um, this was 
very much um, like people pleasing tendencies um, kind of losing myself in a relationship like very sort of codependent of like I will just be whoever you need me to be and I will do whatever I need to do to keep you happy um, and losing myself in that process and then becoming so like resentful feeling like I don't know myself anymore don't have my don't have a relationship with myself um, and then um, that ending up being very kind of um, yeah, destructive. So this is why I often say to people like people pleasing and kindness are not the same thing, right? We often put it as like, I'm just too nice. That's why I can't set boundaries. That's why I let everyone walk all over me. That's why I um, just give everything even at a cost to my own health, right? That is not kindness. That is people pleasing. And it is, a, it is coming from a very different place than genuine kindness. Kindness includes honesty. Kindness includes the ability to tell someone how you feel. Kindness includes boundaries and being very clear on what you can and can't accept so that people know how to be in relationship with you, how to um, be closer to you. Um, <clears throat> so that yeah, general kind of idea of people pleasing, of getting into like fixing and saving, um, I noticed that I I have a very strong tendency to take responsibility for how my partner is feeling. So he can be in a bad mood and it will be completely unrelated to me, but I'll see it as like, oh, this is my responsibility to like cheer him up, to make him feel better. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's not my responsibility. So that kind of fixing, saving, um, people pleasing kind of thing. Um, it, for me, relationships brought up all of that stuff. Um, not being able to express my feelings, not being able to um set boundaries to let someone know when I'm upset um so everything looks kind of amazing on the surface there's no conflict right <laughs> that's often something that we that we see like as long as there's no conflict you must be in a very healthy relationship right whereas conflict is actually a very healthy thing so for me it brought up all of that kind of stuff which are such strong patterns um and have been my whole life and get in the way of a lot of other close relationships and um, get in the way of um, having a healthy career where I'm not burnt out and I'm not resentful and I'm not um, just dreading my job, right? Those patterns are very important, were very important for me to work through and it was my relationships that kind of brought them to the forefront and made them almost like more urgent to, to work through. Um, so if we think about relationships just from that standpoint, it can be so helpful. Like, where is this something that I actually need to really work on? And again, that's not, oh, it's all my fault. How can I do better? How can I do more? No, that's not the same thing. <laughs> um, but it is looking at what patterns, what um, coping mechanisms, what general tendencies is this bringing up that I can use as an opportunity to work through something instead of just saying, oh, well, this relationship is obviously not right. Okay, cool. So on that note, <clears throat> when we think about having healthy relationships, we're not trying to think about having a relationship where there's no stresses, right? Um, same thing with all our stress and recovery. We're not trying to ban all things stressful or all things that are loads on our plate, right? Often the most meaningful things are going to be stresses, right? Things like relationships, things like having a practice, doing meaningful work, these are all going to be hard and they're going to be a load on us, but they are really meaningful as well. It can be really meaningful. So we're not trying to just eliminate all the stress. Same thing as conflict, right? We're not trying to be just conflict-free in our relationship. It, it mustn't be like, oh, it's just smooth sailing all the time. They know what I'm thinking and feeling without me having to say it, right? That's not the definition of a healthy relationship. So then if we aren't looking at just trying to eliminate all the stresses from our relationships, Let's think about what we are trying to do, or what are we looking at when we think about healthy relationships, right? So it can be things like, is it overall your relationship with a particular person um, or group of people, is it overall more nourishing than it is stressful? Or is it most of the time stressful and a little bit of nourishment, right? Like sometimes we are deciding whether certain relationships are even wanted still in our life. Right? We get to decide that as well. We don't have to just work on every relationship 
um, and make sure people always stay in their lives when that relationship is no longer nourishing. And that in the same breath, not just, um, you know, ending a relationship or distancing yourself from someone because you felt uncomfortable or because it brought up certain things. Okay, so is it generally more stressful than nourishing? That's one of the questions. <clears throat> um, there's this, um, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, the Gottman Institute, I think it's called, the Gottman Institute. <laughs> anyway, they're researchers on um, all things relationships, and they actually have a few like courses and stuff as well, if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, but they talk about a five to one ratio. So when couples are in conflict with each other, the couples who build healthy relationships have five more positive interactions in that conflict than every one negative. So that's quite a high ratio. Right? <laughs> so even in conflict, having so many more positive um, interactions. And I think that's where we also often get confused. We think conflict means, you know, criticizing and judgment and um, all that kind of stuff. But it can actually be positive interactions like you know, um, when this happened, this is how I felt. Can you tell me what you felt? Can you tell me what it looked like from your perspective? Right? That is a positive interaction, even though I'm fighting about something or I'm not happy about something that happened, right? Mm -hmm. So that's also in relation to that, that idea of we're not trying to just make it all good all the time. We're just trying to have a higher... Um, ratio of positive to every negative um, interaction. Um, they also have this concept called um, turning towards. So when your um, partner or a, anyone else that you're in a relationship with, when they are um, turning towards you, um, it, they call it like a bid, like they are bidding for your like, engagement, your time, your attention, um, and that idea of turning towards someone. And it could be the same with our patients, right? When they say, I'm unhappy, or I'm disappointed in the care, or I thought I'd be better by now, all those kinds of things. Are we turning away at that point? Um, or are we turning towards the person that we are interacting with? And I don't mean physically, although that can be part of it, but I mean like in engaging with that person instead of like removing, protecting, um, turning away, right? Um, okay, so, and then thinking about if we're not trying to remove like all relationship stresses, we are also trying to just improve our recovery. So when we have a lot of relational stress, how are we recovering from that? So for example, if you are very introverted and you've, you have to go out and do something where you are in a big group of people and you're having a lot of interaction and it's quite exhausting for you, how are you recovering from that? How are you re um, uh, refueling your tank right after that stressful thing or um, you know if you've had some sort of interaction with your partner how are you then <clears throat> returning essentially to like an emotional baseline how are you saying like okay that was a really hard conversation for me like, this is what I need right now to help me recover from that difficult conversation right mm -hmm. um, so focusing on recovering and repairing after conflict. So anytime that we do something or we are mean or we like um, are snapping at someone and we don't need to think about, oh, I must always be perfect in my relationship. I must never make a mistake. I must never hurt anyone. We're going to hurt people. It's going to happen. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things wrong. But we can work on the skills of how do I repair after something has been um, <clears throat> damaged in some way, even if that's temporarily, right? Something has caused a rift or something um, has happened and how do we then repair our relationship? How do we turn towards each other again, engage with each other and um, repair? <clears throat> Things like <clears throat> boundaries, again, <laughs> as clinicians we are famous for our <laughs> struggles with boundaries and it makes total sense. Um, so when we are in relationship with each other, <clears throat> things like boundaries, things like ability, your ability to express your needs and desires, <clears throat> being able to emotionally regulate, right? Like if someone upsets you, 
being able to calm yourself down, being able to, um, <clears throat> if you need a moment, right, that you tell them, okay, I just need a few minutes, I need to calm down, but how are you emotionally regulating? And not just, I guess the alternative to that is that we're just kind of pulled around by whatever every, everyone else around us is feeling. If someone else is disappointed, we feel disappointed. If someone else is angry, we feel angry or hurt um, by that, right? <clears throat> like we have no ability to to almost like set the bar on our own um, emotions. We almost just take it from whatever the other person is feeling. So um, emotional regulation either in the moment or afterwards. Like how do you come back to emotional baseline essentially or recover emotionally? <clears throat> And then things like feeling just generally safe in relationships. Are you, do you feel safe that you can express yourself? Do you feel safe that you can talk about your feelings, talk about the kind of life you want, <clears throat> talk about how something they said made you feel? Um, and that was part of the um, sort of one question that we asked. Feel like you heard and understood and feel like you actually belong. So a sense of belonging is... Um, yeah, it really is an important part of being human. Right? We want to belong, we want to be part of the group. And so social stress can feel physically painful, right? Like when we are rejected or we don't we feel like someone's upset with us or disappointed with us, it can feel so painful to us. And it's because we are so wired for connection and for um, uh, belonging, right? And I think often what we end up chasing is like some sort of it's almost like we're belonging um but it's more like fitting in um i think Brene brown uh, said something to the extent of like these two are actually opposites they're they are not like um they, she calls it a um a far enemy so a near oh, sorry a near enemy so um it being something that looks kind of like that thing um but is not quite that so fitting in looks a lot like truly belonging um, but if you have to mold yourself you have to change yourself you have to act like you're something different than you are just to fit in with a group that is not true belonging um, true belonging is when you are authentic when you are yourself when you can be that person with the people around you that is true belonging mm. okay there's a bit of side note <laughs> i love renee's book and Brene brown's book on um it's called Braving the Wilderness, and it's about, um, yeah, essentially about true belonging, which is it's beautiful. Okay, um, and then, yeah, the last one I just wanted to mention was the support system, but that we did um, touch on is just, <clears throat> if we're not looking at our relationships just being always good all the time, right, <clears throat> one of the things that we're looking at when it comes to making sure that they are healthy is that they form part of um, <clears throat> our support system, sorry, <laughs> voice and cough, um, that they form part of our support system. So whatever we're trying to do in our um, career, right, so that they are supporting us. Um, we all know what it's like to have a partner or just a friend or something that shoots down every idea, <laughs> um, that always thinks like everything's going to go wrong. Um, and it's not necessarily that people just have to like support everything that you're doing and you know let you go into something even though they think you're being completely ridiculous um it's about that honesty again but just how looking at how supportive the people around you are um and for example again it goes back to like can you express that if you have a friend who's constantly like negative and complaining and shooting down all these ideas that you have do you have the capacity do you have the um, skills to actually engage in that conversation with them and say like this is how i feel about this right not blaming like you did this <laughs> you're wrong um, but this is how i feel when this happens like can we talk about that and if you think about it when i do that with someone i'm actually trying to preserve the relationship. I'm actually trying to make the relationship better. I'm actually trying to be closer to that person. If I didn't, I would just disengage and ghost them and just not be their friend anymore, right? Um, so setting boundaries, having those hard conversations, it's not about 
um, building a barrier between you and that person. It can often be about how can we actually be closer. And that's obviously not for everyone. Like sometimes um, it's a more distant relationship or a relationship that genuinely is unhealthy and um, either abusive or bordering on abusive, but then you don't have to set boundaries in a way that's trying to, you know, build connection. You can be very firm and have boundaries. But generally with the people that we actually want to be closer to, the way that we set boundaries is more about how can we connect better? I'm, I'm telling you how to be in relationship with me in a way that feels nourishing to both of us. There's that quote, I think it's also very wrong, um, about boundaries are the distance at which I can love you and me simultaneously. Right? So it's not about um, cutting that person off. It's like, I want to be able to still be loving myself and be able to love you. Okay, awesome. So I'd love to know from you guys um, what you found on those three questions. And just in general, if there's anything um, about these topics, I think it's the first time we've talked about relationships. So that's why it was also kind of, again, a, a kind of overview. And then we can always dive deeper into um, one or two of these topics. I do have in the live section in the Facebook group, under the guide section, there is a live also on boundaries. Um, so if that's something, and people pleasing, actually. <laughs> um, so definitely go check that out if that's um, something that you struggle with um, and something that comes up a lot for you in relationships but yeah I think at its best relationships can be such an incredible source of nourishment and of support um, and I definitely have found that investing in my relationships and just having that as a bigger focus um, has just been incredible um, so I, yeah, I would encourage all of you to, to really um, have that as a very strong part of what you consider health. And I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for joining and I will see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.